SimClim, now with AR6 data sets, is designed to facilitate the assessment of risks from climate change. In this video, we'll give you a quick run through of its main functions. This is the main user interface. The toolbar has shortcuts to the most commonly used functions, and the project manager lets you set up and manage data for your current project. First, let's take a look at the global projection database. Here you can browse the SSP and RSP curves. Values are shown in the table and in a chart. Let's take a look at the Spatial Scenario Generator, which lets you generate spatial images with climate change. We'll select Guam as the work area. Enter a set of output years. And select all GCMs to create an ensemble. We'll leave the SSP settings as they are. If I had an AR5 area selected, this would show a list of RCPs instead. I'll click the Generate button to start processing. The result is displayed in the map viewer in its own layer. It is possible to have outputs from multiple scenarios and work areas, all in the same map. Let's take a quick look at some of the map viewer tools. First is the Pan tool. When active, I can pan the map around using the left mouse button. I can also use the middle mouse button to pan the map even if the tool is not active. Next are the Zoom In and Out buttons. I can also zoom using the mouse wheel. Next is the Identify button. I can use this tool to get information about a certain point on the map. Next are the Ruler buttons. They can be used to place lines on the map. We'll skip over the Selection button for now. The last button on the toolbar is the Stats button. It shows a set of statistics for each layer. The Selection button is used to draw a selection on the map. Selections have several purposes. You can copy the selected area as a picture, and paste it into other programs like Microsoft Word. It can also be used with the Stats button, which causes it to use only the cells contained within the selected area in its calculations. It's easy to customise the way raster images are displayed. I'll bring up the display options, and add a new colour to the gradient. Now I'll change to the Palette Display option. I'll load the default palette. Next, we'll take a look at the Batch Spatial Scenario Generator. With it, you can easily run many scenario iterations and save the outputs as Esri Grid ASCII files which can be opened in SimClim, QGIS, ArcGIS, and many other programs. You can select a set of areas, a set of years, a set of month sets, a set of variable types, a set of pattern or ensemble sets, a set of scenarios, and output options. Let's take a look at the Climate Site Specific Scenario Generator. It allows you to perform scenario analysis for a specific location. First, I'll set my scenario options, then I'll choose a location. The results are displayed in the table. I can also add more than one site and switch between them. I can show the results in a chart. Now I'll update the scenario to include multiple patterns. I can see all the GCM values for all the selected patterns for the current location. The sea level rise site-specific scenario generator works in much the same way. Next, let's take a look at the Time Series Database Explorer. 
and lets you view, perturb, and work with the historical time series databases you have loaded into Simclim. First, I will choose a site. Note the quality indicator. Green indicates the records have no or only a minimal number of missing values. Yellow and red indicates a moderate or high number of missing values. The data is displayed in the table. I can chart the data. And I can perturb the data for climate change. Let's take a look at the Extreme Event Analysis tool. First, I will select a site that doesn't have too much missing data. I'll choose precipitation as the variable and leave the other settings as default. I'll press the Run Analysis button and click the Chart button to view detailed results. Now I will apply Scenario and rerun the results. Click the chat button again to view the results. Next, let's take a look at the project manager. It allows me to manage the data for my current project. I can manage work areas in the area section, and I can manage historical databases in the site database section. I can use the mouse to drag and drop areas. And finally, there is plenty of documentation on how to use the program in the help menu. There is also a detailed data manual included. Thanks for watching this demonstration. Check out our website for more information. And contact us at info at if you have any questions or you'd like to know more.